Uh, G. Uh, no, D. A. Ah! What's up, everybody? Cam Dougal here with Low End Nation, and today we're talking all about the fretboard. Are you tired of feeling like you're just throwing darts and hoping you land on the right note when you get up beyond the 12th fret or even lower? It happens to a lot of people and it takes a long time to master the entire fretboard. So today I'm going to give you an exercise that I came up with that I like to call up and down. It's a really simple concept. We're going to play any scale and we're going to play that scale all on one string. But what we're going to do is play the lowest note in the scale on that string the highest note in the scale that's on that string, and then the next lowest note, the next note below the highest note, so on and so forth, back and forth until we get to somewhere in the middle. Sounds like a simple exercise, right? I promise this one's a lot more challenging than you might think. Having to come up with which note you're going to next when you're moving from one end of the neck to the other is actually really tough. So we're gonna take this nice and slow. We're going to do two examples, one in E so that we'll be starting on the root at the low end and then one in B flat so that we'll actually be starting on the fifth at the low end. You'll see what I mean when we get up there. Before we get into it, if you're so inclined, please subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, turn on your notifications. All of that really helps us out, get some more people to our channel so that they can see these lessons and all the other ones we have coming up for you. I've also written and tabbed out the two examples that we'll be doing today. You can download a PDF for free if you go to the Low End Nation Music Brainery site. The link's in the description below. Download that for free so that you can make sure that you've got the first two examples right, and then you should work through this exercise on your own in every key, any scale you can think of. It doesn't hurt. The more you do, the better you'll be. All right, let's get into example one. Okay, so a couple things I want to go through before we play this example. Today I'm playing a Fender Jazz Bass, so it has 20 frets, typical jazz bass, and that's what I've written and tabbed the exercise out for. If your bass has 21 frets, 22, 24, 26, any other variation, that's going to change the exercise because you'll have a higher note than what I have on this bass. You can still play the version that's tabbed out, but you'll have a couple extra notes. So the best thing to do would be to modify the exercise so that the highest note you're playing is the highest note on your fretboard that fits in that scale. All right, thing number two. I'm gonna say this in every lesson I do on soloing, improvising, or playing fills. The way that you practice your scales influences the way that you play fills, the way you solo, and the way that you improvise. So what I mean by that is that if you're constantly playing a scale, the, the way that you practice your scale, say an A major scale, is this. Guess what you're going to do when you have to play a solo in A major or a fill in A major? You're going to start on the root and you're probably going to use that same motion. So the more, the bigger variety of ways that you can practice the scales, practice them in sequential patterns, practice them starting at the top and going down, learning the modes, learning to start on a note that isn't the root all of that is going to make your playing sound that much more interesting. So keep that in mind, and that's part of what we're going to get into with this exercise today. To start this exercise out, we're going to start in the key of E major. Nice and easy because we're going to play it on the E string, so our lowest note in the scale is an E, which we have right here. The next thing you need to do is figure out what the highest note on your fretboard is that fits in the scale on that string. So the highest note I have, the 20th fret on the E string, is a C, which doesn't fit in the key of E major. I'm gonna come down a half step to B, so the 19th fret on the E string is a B. That's the fifth of E major, so that's gonna be the highest note. So those, E and B, are the first two notes of the exercise. You can follow along in the tab if you want. We're gonna go through this really slow. So the exercise will look like this, and I, the best thing to do is to say the notes out loud while you're playing them so that you internalize what notes you're playing I know that on the E string, especially once we get above the 12th fret, things get a little confusing. Some quick math that you can remember is that whatever note you're playing plus 12 is an octave. So if I'm on the seventh fret, 12 notes up is the 19th, seventh fret is a B, 19th fret is a B. Nice and easy. Okay, here we go with the exercise. We're gonna say the notes out loud as we go, just so we internalize them. I'm gonna start with the E. 
we've got E. Open E just like that. We've got B at the 19th fret, just like we talked about. Now the next lowest note, F sharp. Then our next note at the high end on descending is going to be an A. Then we've got G sharp. Our next note at the highest end is going to be a G sharp as well. So we actually just played an octave. Then we've got A again. Now we've got F sharp. B. E. C sharp. D sharp. And back up to E. All right, so a little bit quicker. The exercise is going to sound like this. There you go. Nice and easy, all on one string. Like I say, go over to the Low End Nation Music Brainery site. You can download the tab absolutely free just to make sure you have the pattern right and the notes right for the E major scale. And now we're going to tackle B flat major. So the reason I picked B flat is because the B flat on the E string is actually, you know, a little bit up the fretboard. It's not in the middle by any means. It's just up a little bit. So we can't start on the root and that's going to cause us to think about B flat in a little bit different terms. So <clears throat> really, if you know the modes at all, we're actually going to be starting on an F because that's the lowest note in the B flat major scale on the E string. So the F is the fifth. So what we were going to be playing through is really an F mixolydian mode. If you're familiar at all with the modes, if not, no big deal. F mixolydian, B flat major, exact same thing. So with this one, same thing. We've got F, lowest note on the neck. So what's the highest note that fits in our B flat scale? Like I said before, 20th fret on the E string is a C. C is in the key of B flat major, so that's our highest note. So now when we go through, We'll call the notes out again, really nice and slow. So we've got F, all the way up to C. Our next note is going to be G. And then we've got to go up to the 18th fret to a B flat. And then we go to A. And then now we've got to go up to A again. So there's always that octave jump in there, if you've noticed. Then we're going to go to B flat, up to G. C, and then we're going to go to F, then we're going to play a D, and that's going to take us up to E flat. Took me a second to come up with that. That's what it is, it's an E flat. <laughs> Anyways, like I said, it's challenging even if you've done this a few times, but that's going through a scale where we're not starting on the root. So it's a little bit more of a challenge and you just have to think through the notes that are in the scale. So A, this exercise is great for learning where the notes are on your fretboard. I love it as well, reason number two, because you have to internalize the notes in the scale and it helps you remember those when you're playing through songs, through chord changes, you come up with the notes a lot easier. So uh, twofold, this exercise is awesome. Um, Anyways, I really hope that you enjoyed this one. Uh, I'm hoping to get through tabbing out some more of the scales. If you have any questions with different types of scales you'd like to use, please let me know. I'd also recommend that you do this exercise using any scale on any of the other strings. So don't just do it on the E string. You want to do it on all the strings so you learn where all the notes are. I have a whole bunch of other exercises for fretboard mastery coming up. We're going to release a course through the Low End Nation Music Brainery. But for now, like I said, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit like, it really helps with everything. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this lesson, and we'll see you on the next one.